Say, like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down in his shade with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. I know it's ra it just finished raining. Some of you are feeling cold. I can assure you that that cold is natural. There's nothing spiritual about it. All right, let's go to the book of Roots. Roots chapter 2, 1 to 11. Roots 2, 1 to 11. So Roots is not the name of a person. It's a chapter in your Bible. All right. Long reading. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. Verse 2. So Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean earth of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Verse 3. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come, she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. Verse 5. Then Boaz said to his servant, Who was in charge of the reapers? Whose young woman is this? So the servant who was in charge of the reaper answered and said, It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. Verse 7. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came out as continued from morning until now, though she rested a little in the house. Verse 8. Then Boaz said to Ruth, You will listen, my daughter. <laughs> will you not? Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young woman. Verse 9. Let your eyes be on the field with the reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels, and drink from what the young men have drawn. Don't work at all. Verse 10. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes? that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner. Verse 11, where we stop. And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. And now you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth, and have not have come to a people whom you did not know before. For a few minutes, I will be speaking on positioning yourself for a life partner. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you because the entrance of the word gives light and understanding unto the simple. A simple people who have come today to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life even upon the spirit of man. I declare, O oh God, that after now we all shall be better people. We worship and we exalt you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, positioning. Positioning. positioning, positioning. Yourself. 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 For a life partner. Have your seat. You see, today it rained cat and dog. And for those of us who came here today and who are here, you guys are the real superstars. You are the real heroes. You know, we sing the songs, when rain falls, when thunder comes, I'll follow Jesus. Uh, but it's until it happens and you, followed him, and you follow him. That's when we know the real superstars. So look at your neighbor and say, I'm thankful sitting beside a superstar like you. If that person does not believe, turn to the next neighbor. And just, just tell him you're a superstar. All right, so today we want to talk about positioning yourself for a life partner. I want to apologize for the hitch we had in the service. You know, that's why we are church. We are not in heaven yet. Everything is not yet perfect. Uh -huh. In heaven, there will not be hitches. Praise God. No sound. You'll just be hearing God clearly. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so positioning yourself for a life partner. So the subject of relationship is quite important to many people. I mean, even as a church, we discovered that by preaching on relationship, many people started coming to church. Hey, Amen. <laughs> so people just want to know how relationship works. Ladies especially. But men also want to be in loving and functional relationships. Because that's the way the world works. Life takes a whole new meaning when you find love. You see, that song we sang, say, when I found you. 
I found enough. I mean, he, he just knew he's not looking for anything else. She just knew when she found the guy. And then Solomon, uh, Song of Solomon we read also, a proper depiction of someone who is in love. Uh, not this poem that you try to write and you clean it ten times and it still does not make sense. You see, a loving relationship is not guaranteed. That's what I've discovered. No, because you're a matured believer, you speak in tongues, you quote the scriptures, it doesn't guarantee you are going to have a loving relationship. Over the last week, I spoke with somebody uh, married, and the person sent me a letter, a letter of divorce. And I've told myself, this person does not deserve this. Good believer, tongue speaking, believe in the scriptures, a teacher of the word by all standard. Another, I was also talking recently with my wife, and we're talking about somebody who may soon be on the way to divorce again. So how do people get there? How do people get divorced? Because many people less than three years into their marriage, everything is gone. Love is gone. Um, the bitterness is worse than bitter leaf. And they just don't want to see each other anymore. And you see, we don't say these things so that we can boast. But I want you to understand that when people don't, when their relationship don't work, the problem is the founding blocks. The problem is not what you see when you get married. Because marriage starts before the wedding day. Marriage starts when you choose who to marry. Marriage starts when you say no to a man. Marriage also starts when you say yes to a man. Because by saying no, you may say no to happiness forever. And by saying yes, you may also say yes to happiness forever. You see, this message, these messages we preach it, is a series to prepare you for a better life. Last week, we spoke about the man who does the finding. The Bible says he who finds a wife has found a good thing. And obtain favor from the Lord. And I said to you last week that I'm going to be talking about choosing. But I've discovered that scripturally it is wrong to say choosing. As scripturally, a woman, if a man founds, uh, then it is important that the woman is positioned in such a way that it can be found. If you're looking for a church, you just move to a location and you're looking for a church. The church you will find and the church you will most likely go to is the one that is well positioned. Uh, you will not be looking for one that is inside one lungu somewhere. And nobody knows the address. <laughs> Say, what's the address? It doesn't have an address. And then you tell your other man, when you see red, you just turn to your right. And then you see a black gate. And then you start coming. You see, those churches are very difficult to locate. Why? Because they are not well positioned. Some ladies are also not well positioned. And that's why years go by, years go by. And if they don't change certain things that positions them, nothing will happen. You see, many times we do a lot of praying. When all we need is understanding and wisdom. And today we want to pass on a little understanding. We want to see what God will help us do. Uh, uh, so that we can position ourselves. If a lady is going to be found, then it has to be positioned. You locate a shop, you locate a store, you locate a business well um, and easy enough when it is well positioned. Uh, you don't go and be selling towels in my village. You will not sell anything. Uh, you, you first of all have to position what you are selling in a good place. Imagine having a computer um, store uh, in some people's village in in Ibo land, and they are selling it. How many people are there? Maybe 30 people. Or in Yoruba land, 30 people. <laughs> because before they start telling me that I'm tribalistic, or in Aousa land, I think I've covered the three now, praise God. <laughs> and then you, you just, and you're selling. And there's no, there's no electricity, no power, and you are selling laptop. No, th think about that. Now, after a while, you are going to close it, or you are going to die. So one thing is going to happen. Whichever comes first, because when you die, they close it again. Why? Because it is not properly positioned. So I want to talk about positioning, and it's very important. But before I go into that, like I said last week, uh, and I discovered from the book of wisdom, at certain time you say there are four things that wisdom teaches. So, and then the Bible says there are three things that wisdom teaches. I say no, four. And then today I want to talk about first, I want to talk about five things. Wisdom for ladies. Five wisdom for ladies. And I want you to listen very closely if you're a man here, because you're going to teach your children, and because she's going to also help you to find the right... Oh, thank you for helping my sound. Praise God. Oh, it's going to also help you uh, in, in finding the right person, even for yourself. And I think it's very important. So let's look at five things wisdom teaches for a lady in a relationship. Number one, God has a plan for your marital life. Allow me to say to you that God has a plan for your marital life. My only advice for you is that you don't miss it. Ruth seemed to be in a chaos, but God planned for her, Sean. It, it eventually came true. Who would have thought that going to pick grain? So that hunger will not kill them. Was a positioning even for her to meet Boaz, who would eventually marry her. If you look at the life of someone like Ruth, her life was poor. I mean, married, without a child, 
um, became a widow, and she became a widow, and then everything just went upside down. And eventually, she married someone who was not even married before. A big boy in Israel. A landowner. How? Because she was properly positioned. Because God had a plan. At that particular time, it looked like all was over. But God had a plan. Listen to this. For those of us who have been heart broken, heart shredded, and all of those things, you're going through life. I mean, there are people who are walking through life. There are people who life is going through them. If, if you are one of those who life is going through them, I mean, it's running on you like an highway. I want you to know that God has a plan for your life. You may have planned. You know, when we were very young, we used to have dreams of seeing stars and getting married at the age of 24. Praise the Lord. And suddenly, you discover you are 29. Amen. Understand that God has a plan. Tell your neighbor, God has a plan. So understand this, because the Bible says, I know the plan I have towards you. They are thought of good and of evil to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plan of his heart from, from generation unto generation. Psalm 33 and verse 11. You need to come to that understanding. Many of us are too desperate. Because you don't know that God has a plan. So that's number one. Wisdom must teach you that God has a plan. I've always maintained that none of us will get to heaven and be able to accuse God of not providing you with an helpmate. It's either he brought it and you did not understand it. He brought, it, he brought the man and you said this is a disaster. Well, it was actually your wedding event. But you said no. And the man walked away. You won't get to heaven and say, God, you are not faithful. No one can win God in an argument. I've discovered that even in a personal basis. And so, that's first thing. Number two, all ladies are girls. But not all girls are ladies. Ah, Shabi, you laughed when you came to church last Sunday. Get ready. All ladies are girls. But not all girls are ladies. This is the imperative of growth. It means that every lady you see is a girl, but not every girl, no matter how old they are, will become a lady. Because if they do not grow up, they won't become ladies. It tells you, therefore, that you must constantly grow. You are born a girl, but being a lady is a function of growth. Are you listening to me? My daughter is a girl. She's not a lady yet. But if she wants to not remain as a girl, then she has to grow. You see, people think that growing, growth is something they lay hands on you and you just grow suddenly. It's not like that. You can't spark it. It's an intentional thing. You decide to grow. Therefore, you must grow. Some ladies grow in stature, but in knowledge, in perspective, in understanding, they remain girls. So you can grow in stature. That's not what we're talking about here. And then number three, don't pre-qualify a man. I'm telling you what wisdom teaches. Number three, don't pre-qualify a man. To pre-qualify is a word that is used in the sales and in the marketing world. That means marketers use it a lot and salesperson uses it a lot. When they talk to prospects, that means they want you to invest money. When they talk to you, in the first few minutes, they know whether you are worth talking to. So, the lady is nice, she greets you, say, I'm from Clinical Insurance, and then she starts talking to you and all of that, and then you are listening. But in the moment she discovers maybe your bank account is not up to the standard, then she starts saying, I think I'm just wasting your time, my time. And then she changes her attitude, she becomes very rude. Why? Because she's pre-qualified you. She's seen you. It means to make judgment prematurely. So you, you, you just look at the person and say, this person is not worth it. So I see ladies go around in church and they are very nice when they are talking to guys who are good prospects. Ah, fantastic. Say, how are you doing? I'm fine. And then you chat to them and they reply you one second later. But the moment is a guy they do not like. That chat can be there for four weeks. Now what they have done is that they have pre-qualified you. They look at you and say, this one is not worth it. They say, it's not worth it. You, and so they become very rude. You greet them, they are wondering, you are greeting me too much. I, I used to be in class with one lady and then, you know, she greets me well, talks to me very well, and all of that. And then we we're going one day, and one guy greeted him. And she said, you know, you know, you, greet, you greeted me yesterday. Why are you greeting me today again? Why? Now, I didn't know that one greeting can last a generation. But apparently, because she did not agree with the guy, she was not planning to give him any chance at all. And that's what happened. She pre-qualified the guy. And so the next day, she greeted me. I didn't answer. And she was angry. I said, ah. Maybe we greeted yesterday. One good turn deserves another. So also a bad turn, praise God. So, and I want to tell you, because you see, we, in church especially, we do this a lot. You see ladies who have 10 characters in church. When they are with Brother Michael, they are, this, they are different. When it's Brother Yanu, they are different. When it's Brother Tolu, they are different. 
when it is with poor brother James, it's a different thing. You see, they are just very different people. They just pre-qualify people everywhere. So when we talk about them, we don't really know who they are. We are confused. People pre-qualify in relationship. Listen, some of you here, I know you are very sanctimonious ladies, fantastic ladies. You don't do that. Praise God. That's not you. Amen. The last person that hacks you out, did he leave you with his dignity intact? Or do you make the situation awkward? Did they walk away kind of feeling embarrassed? Did they walk away saying, wow, we'll never do this again? Did they walk away saying, mote? Or did they walk away feeling, wow, the world is full of great classy women? Because you don't like him does not mean you treat him like a leper. As a lady, make it a go that everyone will walk away from you feeling, wow, this world is full of great and classy ladies. Because you don't like him, like I said before, doesn't mean you should treat him as a leper. You know, when you pre-qualify a man, you also affect the man. And you affect other people's husband, the way they think. You see, many of these guys here are not the way they were created anymore. Women have happened to them. You guys have happened to them. You have panabited them. And so there are four things that happen because you have been pre-qualified. You have helped that person form what they become. Sure, you may not help up dating or marry that person, but you have contributed to making them someone else. You have affected their sense of dignity, their opinion of the opposite sex. You have affected how they treat others. When you hear many people say a lot of things about ladies and girls, it's caused by other ladies. Have you heard people say Lagos girls, church girls? There's nothing called Lagos girls. It's what Lagos girls have done to them. There's nothing called church girls. It's what Rema girls have done to them. I've had people say to me, Rema girls, they don't want to marry. Forget it. They just keep giving no, 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 like they sell it in shop right. It's an opinion embedded in them, and you cost it. Look at that girl next to you and say, are you one of them? You can receive a slap, so don't do it. There are some things you should not do. Number two, when people hear that they are not good enough often, they start to believe it. When a guy hears that he is not good enough often, he starts believing it. There is something rejection does to a person. It empties you of life. It empties you of zest. It empties you of everything you, you have. And so many people become very depressed. Why? Because they have been rejected. I don't know whether you have ever been rejected before. I'm not saying rejected by proposing. Or somebody propose and you reject the person. It's nice. I tell people sometimes God should just do it. Five years. Let the ladies do the proposal. You see, when you say no, it's just, just no. That thing you said no for was a plan of almost six months. The guy had thought about it, packaged it, emptied himself of emotions, spoken to people, and you just said no. And the next time I saw you, you were eating, eating KFC. No emotion at all. You don't care. So they have become rejected. They are no longer looking for love. What you have done is that you have led them to the hands of those who will abuse them. What you have done is that whoever says yes to them, they will just marry the person. Even if it is not God's will. They say, I found love. There is a way you say no and you still remain classy. There's a way you say no and people look at you and say, this one is Obanji. I don't know the English translation of Obanji. So I want to talk to your royal holiness. The next time you are approached by that guy who sits on the fifth row, that guy whose bank account is not so much, who does not fit your spiritual list and does not fit your emotional list and does not look physically attractive and killing like you want. Do not use them to prop up yourself in church. Don't talk to them girls about him. Ah, he asked me, how can you believe it? it's me and me, my... Because there is another sister in church who that guy is perfect for. It, it may not be for you. Don't spoil another man's market. And don't spoil another man's husband by the way you handle him. Don't treat him with disrespect and lack of courtesy. 
Don't make him feel awkward coming to church because you told Tayo, who told Dayo, who told Tola, who not told Cynthia, who told everyone in the choir. Number three, when you keep meeting people that you pre qualify and evaluate based on whether you can marry them or you can date them, you gradually become less capable of forming elder relationships. When you keep meeting people, when you keep meeting people that you pre-qualify and evaluate only based on whether you can date or marry them, you gradually become less capable of forming elder relationships. So this guy comes along and the guy is just trying to just be nice. Praise God. And then in your mind, you're already pre-qualifying. Is he mar marriage proposal? Marriage. Is he dating material? Dating material. So the moment everything is no, 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 no. You just start talking to him anyhow. You become very saucy and rude. What you will do is that you will chase away the good people from your life. Allow me to say to you that God will send people to your life to be your destiny connections, to be kingdom connections. Opposite sex, who are there just to lead you by the hand and take you to the place called there. Every man is not to be married. So because you are desperate does not mean you should now treat people who are not marriageable in quotes as if they are swines. After several disappointments, you hear ladies say, there are no good men out there. Women don't go for good men anymore. You see, when you do this, you program yourself. I hear people say, there are no good men in church. There are no good girls in church. When I hear this, I just smile. Why? Because some of us found them in church. Not in the clubhouse. Praise God. Now, don't worry. It will soon get very interesting. Number four, you will never see any good in him. When you pre-qualify a man, you will never see any good in him. So because it's not as it's not tall, dark, and handsome. And he comes, his shirt, black, <laughs> with gray hair. And then he comes. And then you look at him and say, say, good evening. Say, good evening. I want to see you for what? <laughs> now, what you have done is that you will never, some of these ladies who have this attitude put forth, they will now come and will be talking to them and they will say, I pray, God said no. No, it's not God. It's your God inside of you. You yourself that said no. Because there is nothing he does. You won't find any good in him. See his perfume. His perfume is even conk. It's irritating. Anything he does to please you, if he costs, you say he's calling too much. Here you are, calling another guy who will never ask you out. Five hours. This one just called for five minutes. You say, I, 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 I want to sleep. I'm feeling sleepy. <laughs> Listen, only God can predict the future accurately. Because it's not like it now does not mean it will not be like it tomorrow. Some of you will say, Boaz is too old. David is living life on their own. So, it's a waste of resources. But see what God turned their life around. See how God turned their life around. So, let's progress here. You see, I know according to scriptures and tradition, you don't do the searching. You just do the positioning. I've seen amazingly beautiful brothers, sorry, beautiful sisters. Amazing. When I used the word sisters, I didn't say ladies. Sisters, that's their church people. Amazing. Awesome church ladies. Awesome. Pray in tongues like fire. Quote scriptures like they were there when God was writing it. They leave. Departmental members, they are always in church. But they are not good wife materials. Not good wife materials. Character, zero. They quote scriptures. But no character at all. And so they say, ah, God is not faithful. Serving God is not faithful. Serving God. Listen, I'm not trying to marry the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to marry a loving wife. Now, don't worry, you did your own last week. How can you position you preach? <laughs> now, I want to quickly do this. I want to quickly say, how can you position yourself to find a life partner? Because listen, after now, I'm going to tell you the qualities you should look for in a man. Some of those guys say, mm -hmm, they will keep quiet. Don't worry, calm down. We're getting there, calm down. But let's, how can I position myself for a life partner? Number one, 
align your expectation to God's standard. Align your expectation to God's standard. The problem of positioning is not always going to the good places. Sometimes it's the state of the heart. Align your heart expectation to God's standard. Sometimes the problem is not that the man is not here. The problem is in who you are looking for. Many Christian sisters want a man that has everything figured out. But God's men usually don't have everything figured out. Figured out. Look at the great men in the scriptures. Look at great men in the Bible. They all don't have everything figured out. <laughs> Just think about Abraham. Think about men like Joseph. These men had a rough time finding, this, these guys who have a rough time finding a wife today. Imagine if Abraham was a Remite. Imagine if David was an energized church member, family member. I mean, Abraham calling sister, sister Sarah aside in church after church and saying, hey, sister Sarah, you know I love you and I want you to marry me. God has given me a vision. He wants me to go somewhere. I want you to marry me so that we can go somewhere. I said, I don't know where we are going. I be David. Say, look, baby, I'm anointed king of Israel, but I'm on the run for my master. He wants to kill me. Will you marry me? You put that on Instagram. Look at Joseph. With all his dreams, say, God has given me a dream. I've been dreams, God has given me dreams. I've been having dreams and all of that. Consider Joseph. And then he said, oh, fantastic. He said, but presently I wash plates in Potiphar's house as a slave. Would you follow him? Where they are today does not mean that's where they will be 10 years from now. Never pre-qualify them. You do not know the future. Many ladies lost out on their life partners because what they are looking for was not what God has prepared for them. Align your expectation with God's standard. Look for men, like I said last week, who are in motion. Number two, do all you can. That's how to position yourself. To practice listening to God. <laughs> Hearing from God. It is amazing how many ladies want to hear from God as it concerns their marriage. But cannot hear from God concerning other matters. I sat down and I was talking to a lady. He said, God told me. He said no. I looked at her. When was the last time God spoke to you? Tell me one thing he said. You want me to believe that God said no? Give me one thing that God has ever said something to, to you, you, you. Like I'm pointing to some of some of them. Like, why is he pointing here now? <laughs> now, you want to hear yes or no. But start from, should I travel? Start from, should I go out? Start from, what course should I study? Where should I go and serve? That one is not life killing. What clothes should I wear? Learn and practice any God in simple matters before we talk about life matters because life partner is a life matter. Now, if you cannot hear God, simply look at him based on qualities we have said and talk to a pastor. Don't, don't talk to those clowns around you. They don't know better than you. You know, friends, what is God saying? What is God saying? Look at you. You are the one teaching the girl Bible. You are saying, what is God saying? Many ladies say no without even consulting their pastors. Don't worry, that's next week's message. Calm down. <laughs> and some of you say, I, I have peace. I don't have peace. God does not lead us by peace. Go and read your Bible scripturally. There's nothing like that. He leads by the Holy Spirit. There is nothing called peace, peaceometer. In your peaceometer. I have peace in my heart. I, I, I just lost my peace. For all you care, it may be that you lose, you lose your peace because you are not supposed to be where you are. Not because of that guy. Romans 8, 14, the Bible told us what leads the believer. Philippians 4, 6 to 7 tells us what peace does. It guides your heart. That's all it does. It doesn't lead you. It is the spirit and the word of God that leads us. Peace can give you information concerning a matter, but it will not tell you what to do. Tell your neighbor, learn to hear from God. I mean, we preach on hearing from God about four messages. If you are a new convert, maybe you just started joining us because of love, you can go to the back and just ask for messages. Who voice am I hearing? Um, hearing God, is that you speaking? And, and some of those messages. It will help you understanding visions and prophecies. You will be able to know how to hear God. And that's very important because that's key for you to mature, for you to leave the point of being girls to being women. Very important. Number three, 
Don't just look for the best man. Become the best man. Be the best lady. Listen to this, I've discovered when a girl or a lady steps up, the people who ask him out also steps up. When you are a secondary school student or graduate, those who will be asking you out will be secondary school graduates. But when you become a university student and you graduate, it is abnormal for a Loyola College student to come and meet you. Or Abdullah Siva Atta Memorial. Abdullah Siva Atta. He said, Sister, sister, sister. She, he won't do that. Why? Because you've stepped up. Many people want the best man. But they themselves are not the best. You say, I, I want a guy who is truthful with me. I want a guy who will not lie. I want a guy. But everything about you is fake. Look at your accent. Sam, how are you doing? Just look at you. You lie about the neighborhood you, you grew up from. You are originally Paco. You are sounding like you grew up in Lekki. Look at your eyeshadow. Everything about you is fake. And yet you say you want real men. You want truthful men. You have lied to yourself so much, you don't even know you are lying anymore. <laughs> Some of you say, I want a guy who, will not, who, 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 can, who, who is responsible. <laughs> Let me tell you about responsibility. It means not spending above your means. It means not buy, when you are earning 50000 and you are buying a woman here of 45000 That's irresponsibility. You, you say, I, I, I want somebody who, who is a backbone, somebody who, who is a pillar spiritually. Here you are. You say you want demon chasing, tongue speaking, Bible reading. Here you are. You can't pray for two hours, you will sleep. One hour, you will sleep. We, we don't even know who you really are. I check your status, Instagram, filtered pictures. Today you look white, tomorrow you look yellow, next tomorrow you look green. And then you put this uh, Snapchat thing there. It covers the place where you have the pimples. What's wrong with you? Be real. Some of you say, look at the guy that is coming. Look at the guy that is coming. If you put the spotlight on you, can you stand? Wait. Many guys can come out like this. This is how we are. And we think we are fine. You think we are not? It's okay. But leave you to take your butt and come out. Let's come out. Let's face it. Let me see you. Make we see where we be. No. If you think we are not fine, try and cut your hair. Let's see what happens. That's the truth. You put this hair on your hair. You do makeup. You sit down. Some of you go to parties. You even play makeup parties to come. A guy is ready. The guy is ready. Just wear shoes. The guy is ready. Let's go. Say it's not fine. I was telling Susan, I said, come and do makeup for me. If I do makeup, ah. <laughs> add on to this. <laughs> I will be preaching just there. Those other people you see that you think they are not fine, if they put effort on their body like you, they were fine. Stop doing what you are doing to yourself. Mary Kay is what is giving you glow. <laughs> Cut off some slacks. Cut the guy some slacks. Say, look at him. He has pot belly. Thank you. You come. <laughs> Don't we know what you wear? <laughs> Let's continue. Let me keep my salvation. Number four. <laughs> Number four. Don't objectify yourself. This is how... So don't objectify yourself. You objectify yourself even before anyone else does. Men only want me. They want something from me. Men only want to sleep with me. You see, you have begun objectifying yourself. You think everybody that chases you is because of your body. Are you, are, you, are you like iPhone they want to buy? You are objectifying yourself. Meaning that you have made yourself nothing but that thing. Say, we will not want to be like a, with a babe like me. See me. Listen, you are not a sex object. Stop staying you. You will not want to be like, see me. Look at my shape. I have a banging body. Stop that madness. You are more than that physical body. You are Zion's lady. You are God's treasure. You are a pillar and a support in Israel. You are wise and industrious. That shape may go. That inner being will never go. 
It's not a prayer. <laughs> she said, Amen. Number five, don't be moved. <laughs> don't be moved by his gold. Don't be moved by his gold. Seek to dig your own gold. Babe, it's so cool to make your own money. Some of you are so lazy and that's why you are poor. And you are waiting for this man to save you from poverty. That's why every man you see, you judge him by his pocket. If you have money, you will not judge him by his pocket. He so can't take me out. Why can't you take him out? He took me out. I will borrow you for 500. He tried. He tried. Some people are delivering bread and akara. That's what they can afford. It doesn't mean that's what they will afford in 15 years' time. When you say no, you miss out on God's glory. Because if you don't know my story, you can never enjoy my glory. You don't have to get married before you become a millionaire. Make your whole money. Somebody said, when you make money and buy a car, guys will not marry you. I can do a statistics for you right now. You see, those are the days of our fathers. Now, boys will take that car and be driving it. You think, you think I'm joking? Ah. Ilule. <laughs> Make your own money. The, the guy is driving a golf. God has blessed you with an Avalon. 2014 edition. When you get married, he will say, let us go to that party. You think he will go with his golf? When he's not mad. Am I saying you should marry somebody who is poor? Marry someone who is poor if he's going somewhere. Because money is a current. It will flow. I have seen people who said no to proposals because the person was poor many years after they were regretting it. Somebody was telling me true life story. She said no to a brother because the brother was not going anywhere. Six months later, the brother got a job in an oil company. They were now asking me what should they do. I said, let her call back. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. <laughs> you can judge badly. How many of you have bought products, clothes, you think it's fine? And you wash it, it bleached. You won't go to that place again. So I'm sorry. If the guy agrees, talk. But you know if it is me, you know your answer. <laughs> Another thing, be humble. The art positioning of humility is very great. Some of you are so proud. You know, sometimes I just sit down and say, and then when the guys start talking, I just sit down. I just remember and say, please, please, save me from this. What? What, why is she proud? I said, why? Why? Okay, you have a first class. There are a thousand people with first class. So you have a good job. <laughs> you think you are fine. I would never agree that you are fine. You think you are fine. I've seen many more beautiful ladies. So what's the problem? And many of these proud people are the people who work wearing fake things. You are not tall. You are saying somebody is short. It's high that's elevating you too. I don't understand. How can a 5.7 lady be saying somebody short? I don't understand those things. And then, I don't, I don't they, they, especially when they are short, and then they will not say, oh, my children will now be short. Who gave back to you? Another one, learn to take care of yourself. Common sense. You see, these are simple common sense. Learn to take care of yourself. If you cannot take care of yourself, how do you want us to encumber you by asking you to take care of a home? I know the guy will come. But I've not found a doctrine against using perfume. Never found a doctrine against using a deodorant. In fact, there is a woman in your Bible that used six months just beating herself inside perfume. Just beating herself inside perfume. Six months. Esther. That's why I like people who do glow. She just just put glow. glow, glow and, then they, and then the glow will come out. Why? They have learned to take care of themselves. Some ladies cannot marry not because of the devil but because they are dirty. You know, I said that with all sense of solemn, solemnity and if there's a word like that, an humility. 
How can you be a lady and you have not shaved your armpit in weeks? You hug people and they are, they are saying it's smelling. What, what do you expect? Do you expect it to be? Do you expect it to, to smell like shwo? I'm tired. Let's listen. If you are relaxing your hair, let us know. If I don't understand, everybody joins him natural. What's your problem? The only thing looks thin good, looks like bami water, and you say you are doing natural. God bless the chemist who discovered relaxer. Put that thing on your head. What is the problem? They look like a jackaloco, look like dreadlocks. I don't understand it. Do you know it's even more expensive to keep a good natural hair than to keep a relaxed hair? You that you don't have time to even brush your teeth every time. You want to keep natural hair. These are truth. I want to ask you, can you iron your clothes? Can you take your bath every evening? You don't have to leave a sense behind when you leave a place. Okay, I'm sorry. Number nine. <laughs> Pay more attention to the inside than the outside. Dear lady, life is not about shapes, looks, hello, and gorgeousness. You need more than makeup and glamour. To make a man mark on a real man. Decency, not sensuality, get the job done. You need to work on the woman on the inside. Fix your character as you fix your nail. The next time you see that you are fixing your nail, ask yourself, am I fixing my character? They have gone, they have gone classy now. They can come inside. If there is no light, their nails will be bleaching. Luminous. First Peter chapter 3 verse 4. Bible says, don't let that beauty be the outward. Rather let it be the inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit. The incorruptible, and that's unfading beauty. That beauty will not pass away. How many of you have seen your grandma's picture before? And you see what she has become now. That beauty has gone. But there is an inner beauty that does not fade. That's what you should pay attention to. In being found by God's will, work on your character. Don't settle for less. Stop saying, you know, it's anger. We are all angry in my family. You know, it's just anger. Who wants to put a, a vent of a volcano at home? Who wants to do that? I say, my food. Ah! You are all church people. You know some women, ladies that are not married, that you don't joke around them. You know them. Am I talking senses? You don't. Even when you want to talk, you play it again in your head. Because they can. I was talking to one lady recently. I said one thing like this. She gave me like 10. When something has happened, I took it in good will. Good will. I didn't even go and meet her. I just, I calmed down. If she's the only one in the world, and I, wa I was not married, I would be a pope. Solomon said, it is better to be in a house alone. It's better to be on top of a roof than to stay in the house with a nagging woman. You need to conform yourself to the image of God. Number 10, don't rate your feelings higher than God's voice. Your feeling. I don't feel anything for him. Oh. I don't feel anything. Who told you you are supposed to feel something for him? No, I want to ask you, who told you that you're supposed to feel something for him? If not that you are watching those Nollywood films, African Magic, and, and you are reading novels, M and B, Harley Quinn, those things have made you believe that you are supposed to feel something. Somebody was talking to me, I don't, I don't, I'm dead around him, I'm dead around him. I said, I thought the life of God was inside of you. Bible says he quicken him. There should be a quickening spirit. You should not be dead around him. God will not. God will bring you His will. He didn't promise to bring you rainbows and sparkles. Are you listening to me? He didn't promise to give you rainbow and sparkles. He only promised you the fullness of His will. I have seen many people who didn't feel a thing at first, and today they have beautiful, awesome marriages. And I've seen people 
who went and ran on feelings. And today they are divorced. Feeling is not enough. If I let me tell you this. Do you know that if every evil marry everyone we have feelings for, some of us will be on our seventh marriage by now. Are you, do you agree with that? On our seventh marriage. Why? Because feelings go and feelings come. Feelings. It's like starting a generator and then you off it. I know some people find it very difficult to off. For some of us, I can't panic. You may not feel anything at first. Go on what God says. Now, some of you say, you know, I don't feel anything for him. But you know you're a very funny person. Very funny. Have you seen God? Have you feel God before? Is God not real? Love is not a feeling. Love is a tangibility in the heart. When you choose to love someone, you love the person. But when you have pre-qualified them, there is nothing they want to do that you make you love them. Number 11. I think the men stopped at 11. Your own is going to 13. Number 11. You need to seek to have a good testimony and a good name with men. The road of I don't care leads to the house of Adai known. Ladies, listen to me. Guys talk a lot. I'm telling you, secret. They talk a lot. All these things that they used to lie at you and say, yes, just, bah, 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 bah. it's a lie. Oh. They are not just going to talk where you see them, but guys talk a lot. When some guy, a guy was telling me that when a guy came to him and said, you know, I want to, I want, ah, do you know that girl? He spoke for one hour about the girl, one hour. Those people are married today. Why? Because he gave a good testimony. We are not fools. No matter what God says, we are telling people, <laughs> Alpha, Emmy, that girl. Uh, that girl. That's it. You see, he doesn't even have to say, Ah! Let, no, no, you are the people who have theatrics. There's no theater. Eh? That one. That face, I said enough. So you must have good testimony. You must have good testimony. Same thing happened to Ruth. When Boaz came back, Boaz asked, who is that woman? Said, ah, Agbero, Agbero. That would have been the end. He said, that is the good woman that followed Naomi. That's a good testimony. Some of you were saying, don't follow that Yahoo boy. Don't follow that Ron's girl. He said, now nah, what is iPhone? That's his iPhone. That's his iPhone. You will now be saying no husband. He's not that guy that will marry you. Another one will just come and say, Alpha. Oh. Yeah, oh, come on. Ah! Don't try it, oh. I know that. Jerry, you don't know. Ah, oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Ah, oh, don't do it. Stop it. Stop it. Ah. Say, I love. Stop it. Ah. Don't say that again. What do you mean by love? Don't, don't say that again. If you don't say, I will tell your brother. What are you? We can't be that forceful. You think it's you? We will tell him. You are stupid. Ask them. Say, I'm thinking of Ori Okwe. There are things you should not think. We don't expect you to think it. How can you think it? You just say, do this. No, don't even think it. You enters your mind like this. Just cast it out. That's a bad imagination. I'm telling you. When a lady sees a, when a man sees a prospect, before he comes to you, he has asked questions. Ask in your house. My dad even asked me that and said, you ask. You ask, so ask for the picture of the mother. You see how the mother looks like because that's how your wife will look like in future. My dad, very experienced somebody, tell you. Say, she's slim now. That's not me. she'll be slim in future. So ask, go to their house. See her in the morning. Just go. Just knock without makeup. This one's very important so that you won't say, eh, it's not good again. See her hair. Very important. See everything. So that if you don't like it, you will know. I said, thank you. These are normal things you should do. If not, if not, on your way, she just clear the air like this. <laughs> a, girl, a girl was telling me, there's no hair on his head. I feel like slapping the, the witch out of the girl. You call, you people call. You have been growing your hair. You have not touched that hair for the last four years. See how it is. You are close to being bad. I'm telling you, this is not growing. And you are saying somebody's hair is bad. 
if I keep my hair for one year, Number 12, be ready to be led. Submission is not against feminism. Submission is God's will. Be a lady. Enjoy being a lady. I saw one feminist saying that a guy came out and opened the door for her and she was angry. Please, if you are my daughter, you do, do that. We'll do deliverance session. He's let him do his job. He's been sweet. Say, thank you. And then enter. Simple. Be led. It's okay. Two of you cannot drive. That's why the Oyibo man will not do two wheels and say two brakes because you will kill each other. Somebody will press the accelerator, somebody will press the brake. It's not because you that are at the back, you are not important, but someone has to be in control. That's what being the head of a home means. It doesn't mean he is ruling over you. It means he's the leader. He's the one in front. He's the one with the wheel. You can also say, point, go this way. Sir, let us turn, turn, turn left, turn left. But someone has to decide that I will be the one to sit at the passenger side. A couple bought a car one time. True life story. And they started fighting. Who will be driving the car? That was the problem. The matter got to Reverend George. I'm telling you. What does that mean? Because it's submission. Am I saying... The man should have led, the woman should have left the car for the man. You look at it with wisdom and brain. Who has to drive this car? Who have to? If you can't do OPE, do OPE until God provide another car. Thank God for OPE. If there's no OPE, start working. It's not a problem, but somebody has to take the lead. Some ladies are so, because of your experience, your father was just a madman, and you think all of us are mad. It's not our fault. We can't do anything about your experience. I'm sorry, but we can't do anything about it. Don't judge me based on your experience. I am me. You are you. Ah, I can't trust any man. I can't trust any man with my life. Look at you. You can't trust any man with your life and you travel to Lagos and you sat down. Why are you not trusting that driver with your life? What if he are just driven you into the ditch? What are you saying, man of God? I'm saying you cannot want to marry a man and still want to marry your boyfriend. You see, when it's a boyfriend, you can be haggling. But there is a key in scriptures. The head of a house is the man. Get ready to be led. The man is accountable to God. God will hold him responsible and accountable for every faulty decisions he makes. And you must be ready to do that. And then finally, let me say this to you. Don't listen to fairy tale pictures of marriage. Fairy tale pictures of marriage. <laughs> you know, especially all these women in church. They will only show pictures of them and their husband in Dubai or in Yemia Jala studio. It's not always like that, though. It's not always like that, though. My wife was telling me, my mom said, yeah, if you look at Instagram, you'll be having babies. Babies are so sweet on Instagram. <laughs> in real life. <laughs> By 11, they are still running around and you want to sleep. But on Instagram, they are still like, cousin advert. I said, yeah, I want babies. Some of you want to get married because you saw one package honeymoon thing. Destination, honeymoon destination in Swaziland. You see that guy and that woman, I say, real life marriage is not like that. Though. You will cook, it will be more, too much salt. You will make mistakes. You will talk, say, I'm sorry. You have real discussions. You say no argument, it's discussions. Real discussions. And that's why marriage is for mature women, not girls. We were arguing one time in an executive meeting in campus fellowship many years ago. And one lady started crying. I don't know if mention her name. <laughs> you need to understand these things. That marriage is not fairy tale. Me and my husband were just working like this. And they will come to church, put a Bible by our side, say, hallelujah, praise God. I was talking to one lady, said, you know when you're married, you don't say hallelujah. Say, hallelujah. <laughs> See, all those fairy tales they tell you. You can't, a real marriage, because some of you think that your dad's marriage are not good. And you look at people and say, marriage is da. Follow them home. Just do sabbatical one month, you will change your mind. 
So because people are having issues or because they are disagree does not mean their marriage is not good. It simply means they have to work things out. In life, our generation is a generation that people, I've had many ladies say, if it's not working, I'll just leave him. I'll just go home. I'll say, pray, I'm going to take my own house. Listen to this. In real life, you work it out. You sit there and live there. That is the right mindset for marriage to work. Many of you quit relationship like you are changing data. Just say, I'm not yet no signal. Just switch to MTN. That's how you change relationship because you are not ready to work it out. Say, I'm dating by. I say, how far? Buy on go. Ah, too long. Ah, there's another one after buy you. I didn't tell you that one. But now it's only. Why? Because we are not ready to work it out. Can I tell you something? Marriage for women is a lot of work, a lot of being strong, a lot of prayer, a lot of diligence. It's not a lot of sweet things, putting petals on the floor, worshiping you. He only does that on the five, three times in a year, many times. Valentine's Day, your birthday, the wedding anniversary. But all through other times, True love is sitting together, crying together. I love you, sir. Sorry, I'm tired. I'm sorry. These children are sorry. That's what it is about. Not that when I, when, I, when I get married, I'm going to KFC. When I get married, I travel to Lagos. When I get married, we go to Dubai. When I get... Face life, oh. It's not fairy tale. You know when you watch movies, especially love movies, they don't go to work. Did you discover they don't go to work in love movies? They don't go to work every time. It's, hello, James. Hello, James. And then they talk. Hello, James. And then after that time, you see them in the evening and they're dancing. Hello. And then they now go to one place under the moon and cross their leg. And they will now be talking. And then the girl will sleep on the shoulder and say, Wake up. And then they get to the car. And then they go and drop off. And the next day, they see each other again. They don't go to work. But in real life, if you do it, I, I mean, I knew, I knew somebody, they did honeymoon, fairy tale. And I asked him, after one, I said, how far now? I said, where you did? I didn't work. You know, good job. <laughs> you see, what happened? They have to find food. In real life, you'll find some things. And you see, we need to gauge our expectation well, because that's very important. Now, this light has... What qualities should you look for in a man? Because if I don't give you, you'll be very angry. Number one, you have to be independent. Don't marry a mommy's boy. Let me talk to my parents. Marry someone who is an independent thinker. Some people have a group of friends they talk to. If they don't talk to those guys, them gang, them gang, they don't make decisions. Don't marry somebody like that. For this purpose, a man shall live and cling to his wife. Number two, affection. Marry someone who affectionately cares for you. Who cares for you? Care is important. Bible says, let the husband render to his wife the affection due are. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3. Affection means someone who cares for you. Someone who cares for you. Number three, marry someone who is loyal and committed. If he's not committed to anything, there is likelihood he will not be committed to you. He changes church like he's changing diaper. He will soon change you also. Marry someone who is committed, who is loyal. Don't change someone who is unstable in his ways. Number four, marry someone who can lead. If you can't lead, don't do it. Leadership is about making decisions. If you cannot trust his decisions, don't do it. Someone you can't trust his decisions, don't do it. Many people cannot submit. Because the people they are dating cannot be trusted to lead them. So if you can't trust him, don't do it. Number, six, number five, trust and confidence. Have, date someone you have confidence in. Number seven, date someone who is spiritual. Someone who is spiritual. Date a spiritual person. Fall in love with a spiritual giant. Can the spiritual giant say hey, Amen. Fall in love with God's generals. Don't go and fall in love with somebody who is six feet tall, but one inch in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of spirit, they can't even see him. He's not a dwarf. They can't see him. 
They don't, don't marry. So marry someone who is spiritual. Because life is spiritual. Let the fruit of the spirit be seen in the person. Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23. Someone who is who is loves joy, peace, love, suffering, gentle. Someone who can be rebooked. Very important. Not someone who when you say, hey, who can we do? I don't like anybody reporting any, me to anybody. I will fight you. You can't live under authority. It should not be trusted. Marry someone who is honest. Date an honest guy. A guy who is honest is honest in all his dealings. He's not, all, all, he's not only honest with you. He's honest in all his dealings. Not a professional Yahoo boy who says cars. I remember one girl was telling me, I said, how far? She said, I'm a boyfriend. I said, wow. What does he do? He says, he says cars. I said, where is his dad? He says, dad is in Lagos. I said, which area? He said, Yaba. I said, and he says cars. He says, yes. I said, okay. I said, the more, he said, he said, I said, I'm like, I'm, he said, like, like, like seven fleets now of exotic cars. I said, I said, he bought you your phone. He said, I said, yes. I said, you old linear. He said, how do you mean? I said, where did he get the money? He said, you know, he's a business person. I said, the money for his first car. Where did he come from? You see, some of you don't want honesty. You want money. That's why you are dating a Yahoo boy. If not, you will ask questions. The first car he got, where did he get it from? Exotic. And he, 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 his uncle. That's what they will say. They say they are, his uncle lives in the abroad. So he sends him, he sends him an SUV. Do you know how many of them have uncles abroad? Is it easy? Is it, is it? They have not even sent a laptop. He said, he said, he said the, as the guy was talking, I, I said, he bought you an iPhone 7. The thing just landed that time. About 300 and something thousand. I, he said, he's a businessman. And he, spent, I said, and he spends his money like this. He said, Yahoo boy. I will, can give you some people's name in this church. I mean, Yemi Ajala and say, give him 300,000. <laughs> you almost die. Before you get 3,000, say. <laughs> when Baba know how Baba they walk, why they walk out to get money? But Yahoo boys, babe, my tojue. I'll spoil you. I'll spoil you. You can say, I'm a babolo woni. I feel like killing the girl. I'm a babolo woni. What's that nonsense? There's nothing like that. They are Yahoo boys, professional Yahoo boys. He's selling dog. You see, there are professions they do. When you tell us, we know. He's selling dog. He's selling cars. He's selling. We know. He's selling land. We know. He's selling dog. He's raising dog. Stupid things. <laughs> Bible says in Proverbs 12, 22, lying lips are abomination to the Lord. Lying lips. And then number nine, forgive. Somebody who cannot forgive. Date someone who forgives. Someone who cannot let go and choose to forget the past. That's someone you should date. That's what you did yesterday. That's why you don't know how to talk. I'm sorry. No. That's what you always do. Marry someone who is contented. Marry someone who is contented. That's how you can sleep and not wake up in the middle of the night. You'll be able to close your eyes because you are sure it will not just go and bring red wrap and put it on you. The world is different. I'm telling you, true life story. I will tell you true life stories. You will be amazed. Husbands that use their wives. Church people, not, not, they speak in tongues. So tongues is not it. Marry someone who is contented. No, no, no. <laughs> this word. How can somebody be driving a Camry and saying this word? Run from that kind of guy. One day we use you so I can drive a buck. That's a car in case you don't know. Marry someone with patience. Marry someone who has self-control. Self-control. That's how you will not marry a dog. Self-control. It's not everything in trouser that should be chased. Because some of them are transgenders. It's not everything in trouser that you should trace. Have self-control. Some of you, as you are talking, if you get up past, you forget the message. Your head is like antenna. Just swipe it with it. Why? Bah, no self-control. Have self-control. Tell yourself, I'm not doing this again. I'm not calling that lady again. I'm not doing this again. No. Don't do that. Don't mind somebody who doesn't have self-control. Say, it's just a little. I, I just left it. I, I didn't know. I didn't know it happened. I did, okay, it's with her. 
Oh, sorry, it's with him. It's him. We're talking to ladies. With him. I didn't know. I didn't. Don't try it. That's how you will not know with your house girl. I'm telling you. Be careful. Number five, uh, finally, I was going to say number finally, finally, marry someone who has fidelity. Someone who will keep their words. We have fidelity. We keep our words. Marry someone who, keep their, who keeps his word. Not someone who will say, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I know people who will lie to their own fault. You know the Bible says people who say the truth to their own, to their own heart. Some people will lie. And they will still be telling you along. I've seen people who make me feel like stupid. They said it. And they say, God, I didn't, you're like, I didn't say it. How did we get here? Position yourself. But after you have positioned yourself, then choose the kind of guy you want. It's not every man who comes and meets you that is a Boaz. There are some things also there. Syria people, canal. Samson is a very carnal person. He's just going serially, serially like that. Serial killers. That's what we call them. Just kill all the girls. Just keep killing the girls. Marry someone who does not want sex before marriage. Very important. Because when he gets sex, he gets out. Can I say that to you again? When he gets sex, he gets out. But someone who wants me that I should stop tell, talking like ladies are the victim of sex because some of them are even the one chasing men for it. Praise God. A good husband is indeed difficult to find. But no matter how hard it is, be patient, be faithful, and God will do your own. Look to build the good qualities inside of yourself. Try and listen to the last week's message because I spoke about the qualities of a good wife, of a good woman, of a findable woman. And try and become that person. And I'm sure that God will also lift you up. Next week, we'll be talking about how to convert your relationship into marriages. And what are the things you should do in your relationship? Because some things are not to be done. It has not 